Hello everyone and welcome to Trails Through Daybreak. My copy arrived about an hour ago. Here we go. My assistant today is, of course, Mishy, the Falcom mascot. Known from Trails of Cold Steel mainly, but he likes to muscle in everywhere. He also pops up in other games. So we have ourselves an unboxing. Uh, note how it says for hybrid device on the cellophane, uh, which of course indicates that it's for the switch. So there's quite a slippery slip cover. And the box itself. And here we have the front cover. Trails through daybreak. Okay, before we dive in, let me just say that this is the first Trails game in the Legend of Heroes Over series where I've seen such an amount of interest and coverage on social media and on YouTube in particular. I find that really heartening. It shows us that the Trail series really is being recognised these days as one of the great achievements in an overarching storytelling JRPG series. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube videos uh, pop up, maybe on your home screen, about uh, what is Trails Through Daybreak all about. And many videos focused on what I would call the elephant in the room. Where do I start with the Trails series? Do I have to start all the way back at the beginning? And, of course, everybody has their opinion on that. Well, you know my attitude in these matters by now, and I'm completely anti-gatekeeping. You make your own decision. What suits you, on what platform you can play these games, when you want to do so, where you want to start. And all you're looking for, really, is a little bit of information and advice. So I'll try and cover it as briefly as possible because the big thing about this Trails Through Daybreak is that Falcom have designed this as a new story arc in the Trails series. They made it so you can start here if you want. If you've never played a Trails game and you don't mind the occasional maybe character from another game uh, popping up or maybe a reference to something that happened years ago in a different part of the Tales series. Hey, it's all good. Start here if you want. And there are a lot of reasons why starting here is a good idea, in my opinion, and I will try and explain that a bit. Because I have played the demo for about 10 to 12 hours now and I'm completely immersed in it. And I think I can tell that after that much playtime, it's safe to say you can start here. And because it's a more modern game, obviously, than the much older ones, it'll probably feel much easier to get into for modern audiences. It all started roughly 20 years ago in Japan when the first game in the series was released, Trails in the Sky. I think it was 2004 or 6 in Japan. And to remind us of where the series began, I'm wearing these two enamel pins today of Joshua Bright and Estelle Bright. 
the two main characters in Trails in the Sky. Very nice pins they are. Now, we didn't get Trails in the Sky in the West until the localization was done, which took a long time because these are long games with a heap of text in them. So I think it was 2011 when we got it on the PlayStation Portable system, the PSP. As you probably know, I'm a big fan of the Vita, and I explored all the games available on there, especially the RPGs, of course. So I delved into their PlayStation 1 archive and into the huge number of PSP JRPGs that were available on the Vita. And I came across Trails in the Sky. Of course I got it and played it, naturally. And after that, I got Trails in the Sky SC, the second chapter, also on the Vita. So that was simply uh, luck on my part, being in the right place at the right time. So I started at the beginning. I didn't even realise that there were so many games to come after that. Trails in the Sky also came to PC in the West, but not until 2014. So obviously I wasn't aware of that at the time. The simple fact is that I hugely prefer playing JRPGs on console. And I especially love those that are made for or optimised for a handheld gameplay. And accordingly, many of you will make your own decision. If you're happy playing on a PC, then you can get the original games there. If you prefer console play, well, you might like to jump into the series at a later point. And that is perfectly possible. Many people have done it and they have survived and the sky hasn't fallen in. For example, there's Trails of Cold Steel. That's also not a bad starting point at all. Uh, I went on and got the Vita version of the first two games in the Cold Steel series and really enjoyed playing them on the Vita. And this is the um, US Line Heart Edition, by the way. After that, the Trails series uh, went onto the big consoles until the Switch came along. And the Switch changed everything, of course, because it's a hybrid device and it makes it possible to play handheld as well. And that's, of course, the big feature of the Switch. And one reason why I like getting that version, because it just gives me that option to go either way, you know, docked for the big screen or handheld. Most of us who have a Switch know by now that it is aging hardware and there are some performance issues. It's just a question of whether we're happy to accept that for particular games or not. Well, in the case of Trails Through Daybreak, I have tested the demo of the game on the original old PlayStation 4, on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and also on the Switch. As far as I'm concerned, they're all playable, but you will probably get more enjoyment out of the game on PlayStation, if that's your chosen platform, if you have a console that is a bit younger than the oldest PlayStation 4, which is pretty ancient by now. Mine's still running perfectly all right, but I did notice that loading times were noticeably slow and backgrounds were not displaying terribly well. There was a lot of flimmering going on and they, they weren't very detailed. The reason for that is that Falcom made a huge investment in a new game engine and that's what Trails Through Daybreak was made on. And the game really benefits from being played on a newer console generation. However, when I started it up on the PlayStation 4 Pro, I noticed 
a great improvement. Uh, everything looked really, you know, eye-poppingly good and the backgrounds were a lot better. The whole environment, the game environment could really shine. So yes, um, if you can play it on a newer console or of course on PC uh, for the graphical improvements. The Switch demo showed me that it's perfectly playable on the Switch. Obviously the graphics are a bit downgraded and so is the performance, but it's not too bad, especially in handheld mode. And that's just fine for me, just wanting to enjoy the story and the game as a portable game. Just to finish on the History on the Trail series and where the best entry points are, there is the possibility of another one because there is a linking arc between the old Trails in the Sky and the somewhat newer Trails of Cold Steel it's called the Crossbell arc and it starts with Trails from Zero. Now, I know some people have started there and said it worked for them. It's really hard to predict. I would say it's maybe not quite as clear-cut a starting point as the original Trails in the Sky or then Trails of Cold Steel, but it's certainly doable. Look, whatever works for you, okay? If you play a lot of RPGs, I think you're used to having to look up things, and sometimes we need references. There's got to be some flexibility. You can't have a huge story arc like the Trail series without needing sometimes also remind us because we play these games over many years and while my memory is still pretty good I sometimes need to go back and remind myself of what happened at a particular point or who was that character again you know it's not the end of the world I think it's perfectly natural really so you play as you know you are happy playing that's what it boils down to once trails of cold steel is finished we only have a sort of final wrap up called trails into reverie now that is obviously not a good place to start so just making that clear so Trails Through Daybreak, I noticed that very early on, I think in the prologue, they briefly meet some characters and there's reference made to the Bracers and the Bracer Guild. That's so? Huh. Well, it's nice to meet you all the same. Why are you being so friendly to him? This guy's been stealing our jobs and doing shady stuff for years. To be honest, we probably have reasonable grounds to apprehend him. That's so like you to say. Jin, we have nothing to gain by associating with this man. Come what may, he will expertly skirt the line of legality and our code to avoid incriminating himself. We need not interact with him more than the bare minimum necessary to do our duties, as we did the other day. Be quiet, Van. Once again, might think, oh, I don't know anything about what does that mean? You can either consult the in-game uh, information files, which are always pretty good and extensive in Trails games, uh, or you hop online and just check it out and you'll know. Once again, it's something that if you find that interesting, you might say, oh, well, I might go all the way back at some point to the first games, uh, tra Trails in the Sky, which are all about the, the Bracers and the Bracer Guild. They play a, a very important part there. What I'm saying is, by playing a game like this, it opens up a whole big world. I've always found that really um, exciting and promising, and, and I hope you will too. 
as I said, there's been a huge amount of coverage. So if you want to find out in depth about the combat system or the world and the story or whatever, there are literally hundreds of videos to choose from. Uh, I won't be able to go into all that today. That's not the purpose of this video. We want to have a look at the limited edition. I want to see in particular whether it still stacks up in terms of the usual NIS quality that I've been used to over the years. If you've been around this channel for a few years, you will know I have a bit of a history with unboxing Trails Limited Editions. As usual, I cast a pretty critical eye over these things. So, Mishy, I'm sorry, I'll have to move you now. OK, the first and always very important report on the cardboard quality. It feels quite thick and quite stiff, but not uh, just a tad less so than in previous years. It's just a little bit of give here. They used to be absolutely rock solid, but you know, it's pretty thick cardboard. It's good. <music> Gloria, Dawn of the Revolution, a cinema movie poster art card set. Now, Trails Through Daybreak being a completely new story arc, it is set in a new region of the Trails world. By new, I simply mean that it is a known region, but stories have never been centrally placed there before. It's the Calvard Republic. <laughs> And I'm finding it really interesting learning about that particular place. Now, there are lots of things that are special about the Trails series. But the one important thing that's always struck me and that I feel not enough mention is made of is the connection between the characters and the world they live in. <laughs> Damn, I just wanted to see if there was anything interesting going on, but all I get is doom and gloom. And most games, to be honest, the world is often constructed with great detail and really nicely, and then your characters are sort of plonked in it, and they go about their usual uh, business, you know, usual JRPG stuff. You sometimes wonder, well, they could be in this world, they could be equally set maybe in another interesting world. You can't do that with Trails games. The worlds are so specific and there are very clear themes about how society works and what that means for people living there, the pressures they live under, the hopes and dreams they have, the problems they arise and how that society addresses the problems. The Erebonian Empire, so that's Trails of Cold Steel, an emperor ruler is obviously important there, and the aristocracy have a very important power hold over people there. That creates all its own set of issues about social stratification, etc. This game is set in the Calvert Republic, a very different type of political setup for a society, but nonetheless absolutely fascinating. We encounter very different problems, and that's one thing that struck me the moment I started with the game. It's unlike any other Trails setting I've experienced before. It really felt new and fresh. I was like, whoa, this is a Trails game? 
I'll just show you the opening. I hope you'll agree. It, it's mysterious and fascinating. Uh, these are the very opening scenes of Trails Through Daybreak. They give you already a flavour of how the story here is going to be a bit different from your usual Trails story. You're witnessing a meeting underground between two sides negotiating over what appears to be a rather sensitive object. <laughs> Even those dumbasses in the police force have their uses once in a while. What's going on here? An invisible person? All sorts of intriguing things are happening right off the bat and I was along for the ride straight away. We cut to a young woman investigating online a stolen item and it's obvious that Falcom is intent on telling a bit of a mystery story here. Sure enough, our mysterious lady, who is in fact a school student called Agnes, meets up with a private investigator, our hero, Van Arkride. An antique pocket watch? Wait. This is what I want your help with. I'd like your assistance in locating the old orbment in that image. And that is the first clue that we are indeed dealing with a Trails game. The mention of an orbment. The all-important device that uses orbital energy and is a hallmark of the whole Trails series for its combat. The voice acting for Van and Agnes is excellent and brings the characters to life. In fact, the relationship between those two is, in my opinion, one of the great highlights of this game. The environments are also more expansive than in previous games. And the final movie poster showing a sort of mafia-style gangster there brandishing his revolver. Very apt as you'll now realize after having seen that opening. A business card case for Arkwright Solutions. So a business card in its own little metal holder. Complicated matters only. That's Van Arkwright to a T. Now I have to say Van, it really is a breath of fresh air. I enjoy his laid-back character a lot. You think we'll believe it was just some coincidence that you were in the maintenance tunnel? That you were just taking that girl with you alone on some field trip? <laughs> Not a chance! Uh, this is a nice scene showing Van's cool, laid-back attitude. He rarely gets flustered or phased, and he knows just how to irritate the police. The trails uncovered a big, quite heavy hardback art book, I assume. 244 pages. A whopper. I wish they'd done it just a had just a little bit bigger in format, you know, to bring out the illustrations a bit better and, and the text. But this is quite something. I, I always keep the art book till last, so I'll show that to you at the end. Okay, I have no idea what this is. It's a bit shiny. I hope you can see that. This is the soundtrack. Quite a display. I hope you can see that the, um, the symbol up here with the X reads Zypha. And that's, of course, the electronic device they use for all sorts of things. Um, very important for your augments, etc. So a very nice uh, soundtrack presentation with eight tracks. My previous Trails games soundtracks were all bigger. 
So I would call that more of a selection. That's the problem nowadays. We can see the squeezing fingers of increases in manufacturing for anything these days. There are cutbacks happening almost everywhere. I think it's important that there is one item where you'd say that is really good quality and well done. And with other ones, you might have to just compromise a little bit. That's what we're into these days. Steelbook. And you probably know that I'm really into my steelbooks. I do love them. Whatever anybody else may be saying, the steelbooks are not cheap to produce. Certainly not a good quality one. Yes, this one has a proper spine with the title on it. Interior with um, illustration decoration. This is really what I would expect of a Trails steel book. It meets my expectations. And of course, the game. No, you don't have to worry. It's a German cheese knife. Vorsprung durch Technik. And as usual with the limited edition, you get the deluxe edition of the game. It really stands in nowadays for the standard edition. So you get a little bit extra, you know. So that's the inside. You usually get a mini art book with it, which just wants to fall out. So we'll have a look at it. And a code for the digital soundtrack. Uh, same thing, the eight tracks. So it consists mainly of uh, illustrations for the characters and short description, which is really what you want. A few CG illustrations at the end, uh, but no sort of manual type information. So all that's left is to have a closer look at the art book. Otherwise, we've covered everything. The movie poster art cards, the deluxe version of the game itself, the soundtrack in a nice presentation folder, Van Arkwright business card, which I kind of dig, I have to say. If I had an office somewhere with people coming in, I think I would plop that on the desk and, <laughs> yes, nice steel book. Roused from a reverie by Daybreak's Light. A warning, this book contains spoilers, um, obviously, so I'll be careful. I just want to point out that there's a starting page with a sort of historical breakdown. This is something you also get when you start the game. You can have a look at what's called the backstory. For people who are not familiar with the Trails games and their history, you might want to consult that. It's a bit on the short side in this game and it can be a bit overwhelming, I suppose, because it's quite a concentrated, condensed. But it's there if you feel you need it or want to check out something, especially about the timeline of when things happened. Uh, separate pages about the capital city of the Calvard Republic. The city's called Edith. And then the provincial cities, and the gadgets are detailed. And I did mention the Zypher. So this is the sixth generation Zypher. And if you're familiar with the Zypher from previous games, you will find it very interesting how they've advanced the technology. The vehicles are detailed. Of course, the main characters occupy a good chunk of the book, as they rightly should. I can't show you Van Arkwright because there's a spoiler on the opposite side of the page. But I can show you Agnes Claudel. And she's a really interesting and relatable female character, I think, and despite her young age, quite admirable, really. So I've taken to her. Then there are scene images, um, CGI art, image board sketches, always interesting, especially for you budding artists out there, enemy monsters. It is a bit on the small side. You can't really see all the detail. 
but there are some interesting monsters there. Good monster design, which is so important, I feel, in a JRPG. There is so much information in this book. It's amazing. Of course, it's a big cast, and we get that in all the Trails games. So I won't show it to you in great detail, but there's everything there, from their attire to their weapons. That's some nice character illustrations at the end. So yes, this is the big ticket item. It looks like at the set price for the limited edition, they couldn't go any bigger. Uh, 242 pages, that's quite an expense. But thinking of other limited editions I've had recently and how publishers have skimped on the art books significantly sometimes. This is quite an achievement, really. Um, I, th this is a book I will want to keep by my side while playing the game. The steel book is, uh, I think, semi-matte. There's a bit of shine in there, but it's not too strong. It's not glossy or overpowering. Uh, so it looks very classy, I would say. And that's it for uh, the unboxing today. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to say, please do try the demo. It is a really good way of figuring out whether this is a game you want to play or not. On the PlayStation, they provide a particularly generous demo size. You get the complete prologue, which is not short, and the complete first chapter. It's well worth trialing the demo. On the Switch as well, I haven't played the demo extensively on the Switch, so I don't know how long it is. I don't think it's as long as the PlayStation one, but there's enough there for you to get a good first impression. I'm having an absolute blast with this game. I hope my little clips have shown you just a little bit about what's, you know, different or special about the game. But I'm hugely excited because we know there is already Daybreak 2 coming. Awesome. And on a final note, I just want to say, you've probably figured out by now that I really, really like Falcom games. I think I've got all of them, the ones published in the West. There isn't one of the games that I don't like. It's as simple as that. Mishi also pops up as a sort of mascot you can buy in another game that is not quite so well known in the Falcom universe and the game is called um, Tokyo Xanadu. It was published already quite a number of years ago and I've been playing it for years on one platform and another. It's getting a new edition coming out on the Switch later this month. Please look forward to it and to another video. I'll see you then. A big thank you to NIS America for sending the limited edition all the way to New Zealand. Please keep well. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.